brothers in Christ. Prize Picks has Tom Brady's week one line set at 0.5 passing yards. If the GOAT throws a single pass completion, guess what? Well, as long as it's not behind the line of scrimmage and then he dies, you win. You're a winner on Prize Picks in week one. If Tom Brady throws a single passing yard, they want it's a free square. They want you on prize picks. They want to give their money to you. Okay. Go to prize picks, use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match, which you can go put on Tom Brady's square of 0.5 passing yards. Throughout the week, we will be talking about some of our other favorite squares to hit with that Brady so we can double, triple, 10x our money prizepicks.com or the prize picks app use promo code bdge and hit that brady point five passing yard baby let's talk about week one a little bit more let's talk about weeks one through four five six because we're looking at players that we already want to ship off of our team or we are creeping in the bike ground guys who are getting drafted maybe a little bit too early but we know as the season progresses we're gonna want to acquire them so today's video is our favorite trade targets either off our team or towards our team based on early season and late season schedules or different mechanic situations, opportunities that will arise throughout the season. So the best trade targets right now, let's tuck our shirts in. Let's get fucking pumped up because it's Labor Day weekend. We got the E-Town get down draft tomorrow, which we will be putting the vlog draft day party out as always, hopefully by Thursday. I'm going to go suck down Margs after we finish this video. So let's get flexed and hit the introduction. I know some of y'all skipped it. Very, very rude. But we shall progress into Mr. Nicholas Chubb, Cleveland Browns running back. We are going to be looking to ship this man off. I have a few problems with Nick Chubb. And I think the schedule, especially the early season, works tremendously in his favor. Nick Chubb's not a pass catcher. We already know that. He excels in games in which the Cleveland Browns win, in which they are leading, in which they can hand the ball off and just milk, clock, milk, clock. Mama. That's when Nick Chubb excels, all right? And when we look at the schedule, I mean, first we'll look at the splits. In games in which they've lost in his career, his numbers dip down 12.75 half PPR points per game. He averaged a full three more points, half PPR per game in the games that they win, obviously. Makes sense. He gets more handoffs. When you look at the start of their schedule, they play the Panthers in week one, the Jets in week two, the Steelers in week three, the Falcons in week four. All extremely winnable, all extremely good game scripts for a guy like Nicholas Chubb. Obviously, Jacoby Brissett is their quarterback, so there's no easy given wins for the Cleveland Browns right now when that is the guy who is leading your team. But they're good enough all around, I think, to keep them in games or at least be in the game script focus part where Nick Chubb can, you know, do his thing. However, after those first four weeks, things get very, very tough very, very quickly. And I'm listen, the Browns might rip off a few wins here and there, but they are not going to dominate any of these teams. And a lot of these will probably end up in L's before Deshaun Watson steps back onto the field. So you have the Chargers, the Pats, the Ravens, the Bengals, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Bucks. I, I, not a single gimme game there, not a single game against a, a weak team there before Deshaun Watson gets onto the field in week, I think it's 13, against the Texans. And after the first four weeks, I mean, they got their bye between the Bengals and the Dolphins. And you look at the schedule after the first month. I mean, they have to play Baltimore twice. Baltimore was the single highest graded run defense last year per PFF grades. They have to play Washington in the championship, right? Week 17 of fantasy football. They were the number two ranked run defense per PFF. They have to play the Buccaneers right before Watson gets on the field. They are the number three ranked def run defense in the NFL. The Dolphins were the number four. The Chargers, number six. Like, they have every single game they have. Basically, you look at all the top run defenses of last year, and obviously things change and pieces move, and some players develop or get worse, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of moving parts here, so this is not just black and white. But for the most part, they play against some of, if not just the single string of best run defenses in the NFL. Some of them are going to come without just Sean Watson on the field. A lot of these games are going to be tough for them to win. So I don't think game script will be working in Nick Chubb's favor for most of the games outside of the first month. So I expect him to get a really heavy workload early on. They're going to want to depend on him. They're going to have good game script. I expect him to explode over the first month of the season. That's when you look to push him off. Okay. We're going to trade Nick Chubb after the first month of the season. After Nicholas Chubb, We'll move on to the New England Patriots. You know, there is a specific player I want to talk about, but just the general team, this offense. We haven't heard much good throughout the offseason. Because Josh McDaniels left their OC, 
they they didn't really replace him with anyone. Like they have Matt Patricia, they have a bunch of guys who they didn't even like really name an offensive coordinator. And apparently, this is the first time they're moving away from the offense that they had used for the last like fifteen to twenty years, and they're struggling. Right? They're gonna be a, they're gonna have a learning curve in this offense. However, there is no better coach. Say what you want about Uncle Bill. Say what you want about Brady. Say what you want about the wide receivers he drafts. There is no better coach in the NFL that adapts his team as the season goes on. This is what make or break makes or breaks good coaches and good teams. You see it with Baltimore. You see it with New England. You see it with these really good teams that as the season progresses, they understand what they do and don't have, what their strengths and their weaknesses are on their football team, and they adapt, right? A lot of coaches come in with their system. They come in with their guys. They come in with this and that, and then they force everything into that mold, and they get worse as the season goes on. The Patriots are the opposite of that. So as the season progresses, I expect them to come out of the gate and struggle a little bit. Not even struggle, but experiment a lot and try to figure out what the actual identity of this team is. You can ask yourself, hey, they brought in Devontae Parker. They drafted Tyquan Thornton. Like, are they trying to let Mac Jones air the ball out a little bit more? Maybe. But this has been a run-heavy team for a long time. And they probably want to run their offense through the Damian Harris's and the Ramondre Stevenson's. And that is what brings me to Mr. Ramondre. I think the first few weeks of this season, maybe the first six weeks of the season is going to be this team trying to figure out what they want to do and where their personnel fits in best. And there is no chance, as much as I love Ramondre Stevenson, there's no chance he just comes out of the gate as a three down workhorse. He's not going to be the featured guy there. Will he split the backfield with Damian Harris? Yes, but it's not going to be Ramondre Stevenson, 19 touches, Damian Harris, nine or 10, right? That's just not going to happen right away. If he does secure the job, it will happen gradually over the course of the season, okay? It's going to come with adapting the offense. It's going to come with taking that role a little bit more week by week, more pass catching duties, more early down duties, maybe some goal line work. It'll happen over the course of the season. And as my, I'm still trying to draft Ramondre anywhere I can. But if I don't get him, there will be a trade window early on in the year because this team will look like shit early on on offense. Okay. I think that's what's going to happen. They play three of their first four games on the road. They start off at Miami, which is the fourth best rush defense per PFF last year. They're at Pittsburgh. They play against Baltimore, which is the top run defense from last year. They're at Green Bay, tough place to play in Lambeau. Like it's not going to be an easy road to start this season for the New England Patriots. And I think that'll give you a buy window for Ramondre Stevenson. Same thing goes with Mr. Sky Moore, the rookie wide receiver that the Chiefs took in the second round. Listen, like most non-early first round rookie wide receivers take a while to really like crack the lineup and make an impact just on the field, but especially in in fantasy football. So you'll see a lot of them, like if they do crack the starting lineup, which is not a given by any stretch of the imagination, I think you're going to see the same thing with like Sky Moore and Garrett Wilson and maybe even like Traylon Burks. Like they're going to take some weeks to see more than 30 to 40% of the team snaps. I think we see Sky Moore play, you know, 30% of the snaps maybe for the first month or so. And then typically what happens is after enough time, they see enough practices, they see enough flashes in those glimpses of playtime, or some one of the three wide receivers ahead of Sky Moore gets hurt in the first six to eight weeks of the season, which is very, very probable and most likely. Or there's like a bye week in the middle of the season where they start to implement the new game plan going forward, which again, Andy Reid being in the same mold as like Bill Belichick, good at adapting to his offense, understands the changes that need to be made as the season pro uh, progresses. So I think Sky Moore fits into that situation like perfectly. What they're going to do is they're going to play their vets, right? You, you kind of force yourself into playing your vets that you just paid in the offseason early on. MVS, Juju, they've had Michael Hardman here. So those three guys will be like the top three wide receivers in KC to rip things off. Here's the thing. All of those guys, all three of those dudes have had a 100% flop rate over the last few years in a row consistently collectively. None of them have been good on a football field at any point over the last like three years. One of them, if not all of them, are going to show their true colors early on in the season. Sky Moore is the opposite of that. He's a very good separator. Juju hasn't has never been a good separator. He's had big whatever. I'm not here to talk about those individual players. Sky Moore will get his way onto the field for one reason or another. And I think one of the beautiful parts about this division is while the offenses are going to be awesome, the coverage grades from last year, the other three teams, Kansas City was the second best coverage graded team in the NFL last year per PFF. The other three teams, the Chargers, 31st, Denver, 30th, Las Vegas, 25th. It's going to be a really interesting division because they all have really good pass rush games and they all have really good offenses. So all these games are going to be really exciting. However, the coverage kind of stinks. And we start to look at the Chiefs second half schedule, like starting week nine, they play against Jacksonville, 
32nd in pass coverage. Next game, Chargers, which I said 31st. They're, the Chargers, I know, they're not going to be this bad. They're going to be much improved. They brought on some really nice like cornerback depth, and their their entire team is much deeper than it was last year. I think the Chargers should be betted on heavily to win the Super Bowl this year. The Rams, next, actually ranked 27th in pass coverage last year. Cincy, but then once you get into the actual fantasy playoffs, week 14 for some people might start if you have a two-week playoff. Denver, Houston, Seattle, Denver. That is a beautiful, beautiful slate right there. Week 16 and 17, like the real championship weeks, both home games. Love me some Sky Moore. Another rookie that we like second half of the season is Brees Hall. And you guys are going to be like, you've been telling me not to draft Brees Hall. I am still telling you not to draft Brees Hall. What is the title of this motherfucking video? It's trade targets after the first month of the season. Brees Hall's fourth round price is horrible. Do not pay that. If you're watching it and you still have drafts either tonight or tomorrow, do not draft Brees Hall in the fourth round. Do not draft him at the end of the third round. Don't even draft him in the beginning of the fifth round. He is very much in a committee on a shitty team with Michael Carter behind an okay offensive line who was going to be improved, but then they lost Mekhi Becton for the year. A lot of problems there, okay? This guy, second round pick, will break out second half of the year. He's not worth the early price that he has currently. He'll be great for the last six weeks of the season. Their playoff schedule, weeks 15, 16, and 17, Detroit at home, Jacksonville at home, Seattle. The Jets might be bad, but they will be able to compete and control the clock in all three of those games at worst, all right? Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle. The playoff schedule is beautiful. By this time, Brees Hall will have showed his true colors. He will be the workhorse in New York by weeks 14, 15, 16, and then we'll be looking to draft Brees Hall in the first round of fantasy drafts next year. This shit is very predictable. It happens every single year. Same thing every time. You all get overhyped on talented rookies that weren't first-round draft picks and then realize that they don't break out for 10 weeks into the season, barring an injury, because I know Michael Carter is going to get hurt first week, and you're going to be like, whatever. Number five on this list, and last player, but first, if you've enjoyed the video thus far, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're going to be making fantasy videos basically every single day of the season. So make sure you're subbed up. Put the D in the subscribe button. Thumbs up. Also, make sure you go to prize picks and hit that Brady square. Last guy on this list, and this is, you know, should go without saying, but Antonio Gibson. All right. Um, the beginning part of their schedule in Washington, it's like Jacksonville, it's Detroit. They'll be able to compete in those games for sure. Gibson will get a shitload of, he'll be good enough as a fantasy running back off of volume alone off of strictly volume because Brian Robinson won't be bike for a while. However, we've known very, very, very clearly based on their actions this offseason that Antonio Gibson is not the answer for their backfield. They are trying to figure out other answers for their backfield. He will be forced to be the answer for you know, a month, two months, as long as Brian Robinson is out. However, all the signs, all the reports for Brian Robinson have been strikingly positive. He will very likely be back this season. And I don't want to say sooner rather than later, but I don't think it's going to be in the double digit weeks. It's not going to be week five right at, right after the pup, but it'll probably be, I don't know, week six, seven, eight, nine in that range. And when he is back, he will take a big chunk of that backfield. He was going to be the starter over Antonio Gibson had he not gotten shot. Okay. He'll be recovering, but when he gets back, it's not Gibson's backfield anymore. It will pretend to be for a little while, and that's when you let him blow up weeks one, two, three, and then get him the fuck off your team. Also, to be noted, they have a week 14 bye, so that might be in the middle of your playoffs. It might be a, a week in which you're trying to compete to get into the playoffs, and having a guy on a bye in week 14 is obviously not a positive, all right? So that's just adding insult to injury to Antonio Gibson's entire life at this point. That's all I got for you. I love y'all. Make sure you hit prize picks. Use promo code BDG when you deposit $10 or more and hit that Brady 0.5 free square. Love y'all. See you tomorrow.